Welcome to Fox Valley Today. I'm your host, Dan Vickery. Joining me today from the Sandwich Open Door is Dave Baker, who is the Executive Director and CEO of Open Door. He's been there with, for 26 years. And 27-year-old, I shouldn't say 27-year-old, <laughs> but 27 years of being a resident and a worker over at Open Door, Pat Smith, welcome to both of you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Pat, I'm so glad you could come over today. You are one of the major success stories, and there's many success stories from Open Door. But first, <coughs> I want to ask you, Dave, how many years has Open Door been in the business of helping the disabled? We were founded in 1963. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah, so yeah. you're on 50. Official, that's our yeah. official birthday. That's your official <laughs> birthday, but, but 54 years, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. 54 years of helping the disabled. And Pat, you've been with the Open Door for 27 years. And yes. just to get a little history, you didn't grow up or you were not from the Sandwich area, were you? No. You came from the Chicagoland area. Well, we used to live in Elmhurst and then my husband worked at um, a beer company, so we brought, a, he would bring beer once a month. That a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sounds that that had to be interesting too. So you came out to Sandwich and you found a home here. But you and your husband were married before you came yes. out and before yes. you made that transition. Let's talk just a little <coughs> bit about your early days. And you have a memory like an elephant. I can tell yes. you that. Um, let's talk about your early days when you came to Open Door. What what did you do? I did a lot of stuff. Uh huh. How did you feel about coming out here? I was kind of nervous. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, some people still get nervous when they go to Sandwich. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and through the years that you were there, you you worked your way through the system and you yeah. became, what, what, how did you end up? I mean, before you, before you retired? Well, I used to work a lot. I broke my wrist last year or so. I had to wear a splint for 17 days, a cast for two weeks, and I had to take physical therapy. Uh huh. And I had cataract surgery because uh, I was having trouble with my eyes, and then I had that, and I was wearing five and a half shoes. And they said, Pat, I think you're falling because your shoes are too small. <laughs> oh, so that was kind of it. but. But what did you do while you were at Open Door before you retired? You were, were you a, a super worker? Yeah, but, you were a, but, did, but weren't you a supervisor too? Yeah, I was a supervisor aide at the East Building when and, I first started. Okay. No, we first started in Yorkville. Uh huh. We had a workshop in Yorkville. Mm hmm. And what did you do when you supervised? Did you show people how to do the different project, the different work, or? Uh, just uh, checked all the parts. Uh huh. That was quite a responsibility. Yes. Now, how many people uh, would you work with over at Open Door? How many people were there? I don't know. You don't know, but a lot, huh? A lot, yeah. You know, Dave, as uh, executive director, you have a, a fairly good support staff, I'm sure, when yes. it comes to organizing, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. work. How many people do you have on your staff? We employ approximately 90. Okay, 90. Mm -hmm. And does that, and that obviously includes the the folks who come to Open Door every day and work? No, that would be another 130. Another 130. Mm -hmm. That so. we provide service for. A lot of, uh, especially since we do 24 hour group homes, you right. can imagine ships. Oh, that. that's right, I forgot about yes, that. That, that many, adds up quickly. How many people uh, do you have in group homes right now? Yeah, we have currently operate nine homes that are home to 64 individuals. Wow, and do all of those folks work at the open door or some of them are in retirement now? Um, some are entering retirement, primarily most at open door, a few uh, in the community mm -hmm. as well. So, <clears throat> Pat, do you miss working? No. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you have been retired, what do you? How do you spend your days? Just uh, doing a lot of activities uh -huh. and, and crafts and going out. Tell us a little bit about living in a group home. 
It's really nice to be in a group home. Uh-huh. And how many people do you share a bedroom with? I don't share a room anymore. You've got your own. I Before, I, when Michelle came, she and I shared a room, and then she got to have her own room for a while, and then Gina came from uh, Chestnut because she kept on Balling and she's in a wheelchair, but she's working on uh, walking with a walker. Uh huh. So Thank you really you. enjoy that. Do you do some of the cooking? No. You don't. You no don't. so they cook for you. They cook. For what a us. deal! You have a room for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can use. It. I used to be a long time ago, about three, four years ago. I was washing the sandwich football uniforms. Oh, is that right? That you was know how much I made? How much? $860 for 12 weeks. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yes, I did. That, that, was, that was pretty good. Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> so you would, they would bring their, their team yeah. uniforms over. And Dirty uniforms, uniforms, and they would come pick them up. And so every week you would do them and have yes. them all folded and lined up, and they would. Well, I think that that had that made you kind of proud, did he, didn't it? Yeah. Did you go to any football games? Um, not last year I didn't go, but the year before. Did you? What else do you like to do? Going out to eat. Out, and you know, you were kind of <laughs> listening to me the number of uh, restaurants you were going to. Let me ask you about transportation. How do you get around? Open door usually takes us on activities. Uh huh. And do you ever use the? You guys ever use the cat buses that, or Kendall County transportation sometimes? We do, do for transportation during the week. Uh, assist you, we, yeah. We uh, have a route that comes and brings folks to our day programs mm -hmm. from Kendall County, and that's yeah. a nice, uh, again, collaborative effort. Right. Um, how many people do you actually have from Kendall County that are? working inside your program maybe come in come into work you know I have to stop and think we we, we were overlapped so many counties I have to remember which list I'm counting right off of. we're well, I suppose somewhere in the 20s mm -hmm. upper 20s and how how long do shifts last um, our shifts uh, are generally eight hours shifts. eight hours mm -hmm. and do people bring their own lunch or do you feed them there it, in the group homes, uh, we would have our folks participate with the food we're serving. Okay. Um, day programs, and it's uh, bring your own lunch. Bring your own lunch. That's what I guess that was. Yeah. So the workers bring their own lunch mm -hmm. to the, yeah. Yes. And and we, we prepare for the folks that are living in group homes and coming to the day program. Uh -huh. Then we prepare and distribute the lunches. Right. You know, everybody can't be probably as successful as Pat. <laughs> And, but yet you guys are there to support and, and kind of guide people to where they best fit in your program. How do you go about that? I think it's, you know, it's really a individually driven. You, you try and be as person-centered as possible. You, you really try and look at the level of ability. I mean, we always kind of try and look inside. You know, the word disability contains the word ability. Everyone has abilities maybe at differing levels. Mm -hmm. But, the, but the, the real goal is to try and individualize programs to the needs of the, the person and their interests. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what do you, I mean, do you always have work over there? I mean, you know, like Pat talked about working on car parts. Mm -hmm. How do you acquire uh, the jobs that people do? Some, generally speaking, a little, mostly word of mouth. Um, we've had this particular contract for a long, long time, and we've been very successful with it. But, you know, as we're seeing, uh, typical of, uh, you know, the country in general, uh, manufacturing is changing. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities we have, especially in the assembly business, uh, have shrunk <coughs> in the right. last 20 or 30 years. Uh, but uh, we've been fortunate. We have stayed busy. Mm -hmm and have had ample work for the folks that would choose to work inside, you know, our, what we like to call facility-based employment. Right, right. Um, Pat, of all the years that you worked at Open Door, did you have any job that you really, really liked? I liked uh, 40, 30 snapping them and then putting them in a thing and sometimes it would get jammed and, and they had to come and fix it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Was that for car parts? Car Was parts. it? Okay. Yes. And what kind of car was that for? Do you remember? 
No. It doesn't, yeah. Well, a lot of car parts are interchangeable anyway. Yeah. Now, your husband and you came out from the Chicagoland area in what year? Do you remember? 1990. 1990. And when you came out, and that was kind of a... a a, a big adjustment to come out right. and and be in sandwich. How did you feel about making that transition? Did you did you'd never been to sandwich before? And, no, I haven't. And you had to come and you had to work with other people that you'd right. never met. Right. How how did you feel about I, it? I I just did fine. You did just fine. Yeah. And what did your husband do? He worked too at the West, and then. In 95, he had a um, heart attack, and then they did CPR on him, and he was in intensive care. We didn't think he was going to make it. But then he went back to the West for a while, and then he was at Real Crest for a while, and then Real Crest said, you better get to the hospital because he was having a um, cataract, um, what do you call that? Um, It was going into another heart attack. Oh, and then okay. He was on a respirator, and I had to take him off because oh, okay. he said if he other had another heart attack, to take him off, and yeah. then he died. Yeah, and he died. So, but you made a transition. You live in a group home. You have eight other. You have eight of you who live and work. Yeah. Does everybody work that lives in the group home? Uh, Becca, me, and Julie go to the East Building. Evelyn, Michelle, Gina, and Lori go, and uh, Angela all go to West. So everybody's busy every day. Yes. And what time do you get home in the afternoon? I usually get home at about two o'clock, and then I walk from the East Building to home. Okay. And how how far do you walk every day? Not that far. But you do pretty good, don't you? Yeah, I use my cane. Yeah, all but the time. you you know you said you had a little problem getting up the stairs, but. You know, it's it's good to get out and do a little exercise every right, day. Right, right. Right. And, you know, Dave, for 26 years of, of overseeing that facility, mm -hmm. what do you think is your greatest joy of doing all that? Oh, I think it's uh, people like Pat. Uh-huh. I mean, that's why we're there. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the enjoyment I get, watching folks... Um, uh, develop, mature, become more self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the joy of the job. Right, right, of just making sure that every day that those right. needs are met. And of course, like as we talked about that staff, <clears throat> financially, you get a lot of your funding, we talked a little bit before we came on camera, from the state. Mm -hmm. uh, you also uh, are, you are also probably apply for different grants that go on throughout the community. Oh yes, yeah. And what is your budget every year? Uh, our budget currently is around $5 million. No kidding. <laughs> a $5 million budget. How do you acquire the homes? Do you buy the homes? We, we uh, buy them. The state does not provide uh, capital mm -hmm. uh, for the purchase. So we buy them, mortgage them often. You know, uh, but uh, it's our investment. Right. Uh, and then you have to obviously make them handicap accessible. Right, maintain them. Uh-huh. Um, and that becomes, is, is that a tax exempt? Is that, since me you are a nonprofit, do you have to pay taxes on that real estate? Um, the, we can get exempted from a real estate tax. Uh-huh. The answer to that. And of course, as a, as a tax exempt, we're exempt from federal income taxes. Well. Right, right, because but, uh, you are a nonprofit and caring for and helping out so mm -hmm. many people who otherwise would not have this opportunity that you're given. Right. So how many group homes do you have? We have nine. And what's the average residential number that you keep in those buildings? Uh, uh, they go from four to eight. Okay. Currently eight is the uh, maximum licensed uh -huh. uh, setting. And is there uh, someone who stays in those homes to help out? Are they there 24 hours a day? We're, we're there, we staff, when someone is there, we staff uh, 24 hours, so to speak. But we, don't ha we do not have live-in staff. We have shift staff. We found that, in our case, we feel that works better. 
Uh huh. Um, but then during the day when folks are Monday through Friday, of course, when they're involved in a day activity, right. we wouldn't necessarily have staff in that right. home. But of course, someone could be sick oh, or yes, whatever. Oh, yes, absolutely. How do you manage, I guess it's always, uh, I've always kind of wondered, when you have uh, group homes, when you have mm -hmm. four people, eight people, you have a big staff, do you require everybody to get a, a flu shot so that doesn't yes. work? Yes. Yeah, I just, I just kind of wondered how shot. all that would work because, you know, the flu starts throughout a building. Oh, yeah. As close as you guys all live and work, that's, sure. that can, People can have some, you can go through some real tough times for that. Oh, you bet, yes. yes. So do you have uh, emergency staff on at, at your buildings, like a nurse or somebody? We have uh, on-call nurses. Yes. On-call nurses mm -hmm. that, could, that could be there yeah. for you. Yeah. So, okay. And, you know, we're, we're fortunate. We're close to a very active medical community. Yes, you are. You know, we have an emergency room in town, which is, is great. Right. You know, it's, it's one of the values that you don't think about till you need. Right. Um, and we have a very cooperative medical community. Uh -huh. We've had very good response uh, in terms of getting our folks in. Right. Uh, so we've been very fortunate in that Yeah, it's, it's always to me interesting as to how you manage all that you do because between staffing for, for working staffing for the group homes and keeping everything organized that you have you and your group have a terrific organizational skills I could probably take a lesson from you guys <laughs> <laughs> well I'll tell you what we got to take a little bit of a break but we're going to come back with Brandon Sandman and uh, Dave or Gene Stevens uh, Brandon is uh, going to participate in the Special Olympics in Seattle, Washington in just a few weeks or a few months. I'm not sure what the date is, but we'll come right back and tell you all about that. Stick with us. We'll be right back. So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. The box. Your son wants to get a cat, I'll really take care of but it. you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, <laughs> B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to Fox Valley Today. I'm here right now with uh, Open Door uh, program coordinator Gene Stevens and Brandon Sandman who is going to participate in the Special Olympics in Seattle Washington Brandon when are you going to that it's um July 1st through the 6th July 1st through the 6th mm -hmm. so are you kind of, I bet you're kind of excited about that huh yeah being the first from Canada County Special Olympics to have a go to nationals 
Okay, so you are a resident of, of, of Kendall County, right? Where do you well, live? Actually, I live in Sandwich right now. Okay, but you grew up in Kendall County, or that's, that where, true. that's where your family is from. Okay, yeah. that, this, is, this is amazing. You're the first one from Kendall County to, now we've had alternates that have been, you know, but you are, you have, how did you make it that far? First by being uh, nominated, uh -huh. and then I think they draw names out of a hat and really kind of weird. But <laughs> why do you say that? Just because? Or, or you know what? Sometimes they say it's better to be lucky than good. Pretty much. <laughs> well, you have to qualify first, yeah. and that you did. You absolutely mm -hmm. qualified. You okay. Have the skills there. Yeah. Now. Um, Gene, as program coordinator, you've worked closely. You work closely with the Special Olympics, also. Uh, yeah, for about the last two years, I've been working with the uh -huh. Kendall County Special Olympics. You, we talked a little bit off camera how important the the coordination between Open Door and Special Olympics, and how that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, for Open Door to do it independently, it would be very taxing on our resources, uh -huh. and we don't necessarily have everything that we need in order to provide that uh, intensive services uh, for Special Olympics. So partnering with KCSO is very important uh, and it allows us to provide that service with their assistance. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's been very, I think, beneficial for, for uh, both parties. Right, and I know, uh, you know, I'm a resident of Kendall County, but uh, I know that uh, they have some really massive fundraising organizations that get involved with this. I mean, the sheriff's department, and they do, don't they also do cop on a roof and stuff like that? Isn't yeah. that all part of it? That is all part a of and it. They, and they talked about uh, this special group of the Special Olympics being one of the largest fundraising groups in the whole state. Oh, I could believe it. I, I don't necessarily know. But, yeah, and I mean, know, they talked about, it. you know, well over $100,000 that they were able to raise. Does now, well. does that help provide transportation and, and all the stuff that's going to be needed to, to send Brandon out there? It pays for everything. Okay, so if his family is able to go. Well, I mean, well, I mean, all of his expenses will oh. be paid for by okay. Special Olympics. Okay. Yes. And who's all going to go with you? Do you know, Brandon? Well, obviously my parents and uh, and some of my coaches hopefully will go and my sister wants to go too. Well, I think this sounds really... Now, tell us which uh, events you're going to participate in. Uh, I'm doing the 200 meter and I think I'm doing the 400 meter and the 4x100 wheelie. Okay, and what's a 4x100 wheelie? It's a... It's a team of four that goes 100 yards each. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So everybody. So it's kind of one of these pass the torch, or the, relay, the, baton, yeah. the baton, or the, yeah. the relay uh -huh. kind of thing. So and and are these all people that you know who are going to participate in the in that? So your nope. teams will be selected after you get there. Yeah. Okay. Is this the first time you've been selected? Yes. Okay. Um, what was that like when you got the letter or notification? Well, it started when I was at a bowling practice for sectionals. Bowling practice? You were in the sectionals? Well, you're, you're this, quite, this Saturday is sectionals. Uh huh. You're quite an athlete then, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, good for you. Okay, and I then had, what happened? I noticed my, both my grandmothers and my relatives were uh -huh. there. I was thinking, hmm, must have all came to see me practice. Well, there, there, there's either something good going on or I'm in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right. Pretty much. <laughs> so then what happened next? Then, uh, then they, Marcy and uh, Eva, an announcement about one of us got selected to Seattle for nationals. And that's when they, I found out the reason why most of my relatives were there. 
Okay, so that was really exciting. There's a mm -hmm. video. I was there for that day. I was blessed to be able to be there for that day for the announcement. Uh huh. And yeah, it was really weird. Not you know, why is everybody here? You know what's going on? But the video is priceless. It's on Facebook, on KCSO's Facebook page, and on Open Doors Facebook. Is page. it? I wish. We, uh, how long of the video is it? Uh, it's only like a, a 30 second video. Well, maybe we could post it on the WSPY. Yeah. Uh, it's pr Brandon's reaction okay. is priceless. Maybe you could get that to us. Absolutely. We absolutely. would love we would love to see it, or maybe we can pick it up on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and how how would that is? How what would you look under? K K KCSO. KCSO. Facebook page, and then Facebook. Open Doors Facebook page. Facebook page, or Open Door Facebook page. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if we can do something about getting that up because that's really that's really exciting. Now, is this the first time you ever going to be on an airplane? Actually, I've been on an airplane before. Okay, well, so then you're seasoned. Uh, are you hoping to go? Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to go. Uh -huh. uh, but we are this Sunday. Brandon and I are going to uh, Bloomington Normal to the SIU campus because uh, it's the preliminary, getting yes. ready, mm -hmm. the whole meeting. So uh, we get to hang out the, the entire day today yeah. together. And, and a couple of weeks ago, uh, Robin um, Boughton was on, yeah. and I think uh, Brand, they were hoping Brandon could come, but he was not feeling well that day. And they were talking about the, you know, the preliminaries that were going to be going on down at ISU. So, so that's kind of now. Let me ask you this, Gene. How long have you been with Open Door? I've been with Open Door for 21 years. 21 years. You don't look like you're over about 25. So, you know, Thank or as, you. as I get older, everybody else looks younger. And as program coordinator, how do you, how do you manage all this? Oh, uh, an exceptional team. Uh -huh. uh, th that's the only thing I can, uh, that's the only way I can think of to respond is that we do have an exceptional team at Open Door, uh, including Dave Baker, who was here earlier. Uh, we have a management team of five individuals that uh, we work so well together. It's a small family. Uh -huh. uh, I have to say that as an organization, um, it's that exceptional team. Right. And, you know, did you grow up in the area? I was born and raised in Aurora. Uh huh. Uh, and I moved to Sandwich uh, in 05. Okay. Now, uh, did you have a background in working with the disabled? Uh, I was going to grad school at Northern Illinois University and uh, I had an opportunity to do my graduate uh, internship at an organization for serving persons with disabilities. Uh, I had more of a specialty in hearing impairment and deafness but I wanted to branch out so I decided to uh, check out Open Door mm -hmm. and I'm glad I did. I fell in love with the population. I fell in love with the work that we do. And I was really sad at the end of my internship because, you know, okay, I'm done. Uh, a couple months later, they called and offered a job position and I jumped on that. You jumped and never on looked it. back. Yeah, and you never looked back. Well, I think they're very blessed to have you there. Oh, thank you. You know, Brandon, the whole county's gonna be watching you. And yeah. uh, I hope that you can send back some videos uh, especially to WSBY so we can see how you're doing out there. This is a big honor, not just for you, but for the whole county and the organization and, the, and, and how you are gonna lift up, especially Open Door, when people can see that you have been, and how long have you been with Open Door? Um, about two, two and a half weeks, I'll be, it'll be 14 years. 14 years, and that you're gonna bring some great publicity and you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna really show people how much they can honor the organization that has helped you through the last 14 years and got you to help you get to where you're at today. Congratulations to Thank you. you. We'll be watching you, you know. <laughs> People are watching you today too. Well, thank you very much for, for coming over and thank you, uh, Jean, for all you do for our community. And Brandon, congratulations and thank good you. luck. We're gonna look forward to having you come back and tell us all about it. Thank you for Absolutely. joining Fox Valley today, and uh, keep your eye on Brandon. He's going to be a star. Uh, we'll see you next time.